Hey, what is going on guys? Got another gameplay commentary for you. Playing on a different map. We have not seen this map before apart from on my Kunai highlights of 2012. And it is Barn Blitz. PL Barn Blitz. So we'll be starting on blue team on offense. And if you don't know what payload is, you just need to get the cart to the end, basically. So, um, I chose this gameplay because it's on a different map, which is always good. It's good, which is, again, always good. And it's highlighting the use of a survivalist spy set, which I have talked about in other videos. And the survivalist spy set is the, the uh, Spicicle, the Dead Ringer, and the Lushron J. And what this does is allows you to survive for the longest. I mean, obviously you could use a cloak and dagger and sit in the corner all game, but I'm not really counting that. So what this will do is, um, let me just talk about it in combination. The Dead Ringer allows you to take minimal damage and, you know, escape... Um, Situations where you usually wouldn't be able to escape with an Invisiwatch or a Cloak and Dagger, so you can take minimal damage. The pistol allows you to get Cloak back on each hit, allowing you to charge your Dead Ringer faster, and again, you will not take as much damage. Also, the um, Spicicle, it hides the kills in the kill feed, so people looking out for that won't see it. Um, and it also allows you to not get set on fire when a pyro sprays you, which is probably one of its most important features. And all these in combination really do help you survive for a long time. And some, some lives I get in this game are really long, some are short, but um, this is definitely the one. If you want to, you know, really stay alive for the longest, um, this is the set to use. I'm not saying that this set um, means that you'll do the best, because staying alive doesn't actually mean being active because the reason that it's not the most active set is because of the um, spicicle because the spicicle it takes a long time to recharge it takes 15 seconds and it won't go any faster you can't add cloak and make it go faster because it just doesn't work like that but it's very good with the dead ringer because it provides one of the most convincing spy deaths in tf2 because if a pyro sprays you and you die and there's no afterburn flames on you, then it really is a, um, a very convincing death with a dead ringer. Um, the most active set, if you're wondering uh, what an active set is, is just um, you can get done. The most you can get done, so stabs, zaps, pretty much everything. And in my opinion, that set would be the dead ringer, the ambassador, and the normal stock knife. That is the most active set, in my opinion. And I've made multiple gameplays of that, but I haven't called it the active set. Um, but yeah, so um, I had a bit of trouble with the heal on Kita here. Um, I didn't expect it to be used. I thought people had stopped using this weapon because it's so bad. Um, it gives enemy. Um, I've talked about this in my pipeline video, but it gives enemies heavies um, a false sense of security, thinking that they've protected by spies. Where all it takes is a jump, and um, that will solve the problem. Yeah, it can sometimes catch people out, but it's it's nothing compared to the stock minigun. I mean, the ammo it just chews up is ridiculous. Um, can't say I play much heavy myself, but I definitely know it's not one of the better heavy weapons. But um, we managed to get these first few points really well um, at the start. Didn't expect to. Got nine minutes on the clock to get this one checkpoint. And um, this one's usually one of the hardest, not as hard as the last. Um, because the last, you kind of got... Um, when you're pushing the cart, you haven't got the height advantage, but when you're not pushing the cart, you do have the height advantage. And what that does is that people go for the height advantage and forget about the cart. So it can, you know, people forget about the cart sometimes in payload, and it can be quite frustrating because I was trying my hardest in this video. Um, yeah, so it was a great gameplay. Um, it's quite long as well, 18 minutes, but that's usually how long a standard game is for me, so got used to doing these 18 minute commentaries um again if i can't talk for 18 minutes i'll probably try and make up a topic but um yeah so what i'm trying to do is um just stay alive and be um 
active but just subtle act actions um so not going for the chain stabs and things like that we'll just keep zapping little teleporters here and there getting one or two backstabs and it'll allow you to stay alive for a lot longer um the aim is for me to stay alive and if i can stay alive for longer it not only damages the team um in damage it it's kind of got a psychological damage to them so they uh, they start getting worried, they start doubting their own actions. Pyro start thinking, you know what, I'm not going to chase down this spy because um, he's probably going to get away or he's probably going to turn around and corner stab me and it can really affect some teammates and you can definitely, definitely tell in this video that the team gets psychologically damaged by me being around because the way they spy check later on in the game is absolutely ridiculous. And it gives you that sense of satisfaction, really, that you've done well. But it also means that you've got to, you know, you've got to work your socks off to get it, get the consistency, which um, I've often commented on with spies. When you do really well at the start, enemies will come, you know, known to your tactics, and you've really got to adapt, um, just like the click of a finger. So that's what um, I'm trying to do here is um, what I was doing before is playing an up-close spy, and now I'm playing them more in the back lines, picking off the one enemy at a time as that will, you know, they'll see um, an iced body sculpture for where I'll get a backstab, and that will that will damage them as well. They will see that, and they will get scared. They will instantly turn round and what's it, have a look round, and if you didn't know, when you backpedal, move backwards, um, you move 10% slower, so technically, I'm actually slowing the team down just by, you know, killing one guy and them seeing the ice sculpture and turning round. You can look at it that way. Um, it's always good to slow the enemy team down and it's it's very very hard this last point for spy to perform really because the enemy you've got such a long spawn and we didn't have any engineers and they've got such a short spawn and you've got to try and still remain hidden and still remain stealthy and active at the same time and I find um, bomb blitz very very hard um, not um, usually get or even play on Barn Blitz, but I was watching some other spy called Mr. Paladin that I like watching, um, watching him play on it, and that's one of his favourite maps, and he just gave me some tips on it, and I decided to take him up on it and play a bit of uh, Barn Blitz, and what do you know, I did get a good gameplay, so that's always nice. Again, um, I've changed my tactic because you don't want to stick to the same thing too much unless it is working, and that staying back in the spawn thing wasn't really working for me as for some reason there's now like ridiculousness with the spy checking um, there's this one heavy and he just goes mad and um, you know like I said about payload people forgetting about the car um, this is exactly what happens I mean look there's one person on the car and it's me and it's nearly nearly near the top and all I need is just two people just to hop on and help me uh, but no it falls all the way back down to the bottom and didn't get um, any assistance there, so that's it's always a bit of a um, punch in the stomach, really, when you see that because you know that all your work's been undone, and I could have been doing something then, but I decided to try and really help the team, and I was uh, starting to struggle around this point, and you know, recovering from struggling at spy, it's it's hard, but I was using the survivalist spy set, so I did have faith, um, and I was. I knew that I could turn this around, and I've not died for a long time, though. Um, you've got to be careful not to get um, too distracted by what you're doing. If, you, if you're doing getting spy checked, it doesn't mean you're doing bad. It just means that you've been alive for an awful long time, and that the enemies are getting more and more keen to get you. Um, but yeah, I am staying alive for a lot now, and the health, it just keeps slipping down and slipping down. And I'm not sure when I die, but I'm pretty sure it's around here somewhere. Where you don't want to overextend your lives, even though it is a survivalist spy set. You want to keep your life going as long as you can, and then do like a bold movement like this. And if it doesn't work, then you've still got the sentry zapped and down. Um, but if it does work, then you carry on playing. You've got to make one or two bold movements every now and again, just to make sure that you're still remaining active and you're not being um, a cloak and dagger spy in the corner. Um, and, you know, as soon as you've gone, been done your big movement, you can stop and, you know, take a break. And this is what I do here. I just wait for these one enemies to come out of the gate. And I do this quite a lot in this um, in this video. And this is the heavy here. He spy checks absolutely everybody. Um, 
he was really, really hard to get. I don't know why. It might have been because I might have uh, stabbed him earlier on, but something did um, happen. And this was a bold movement. It was it was a stupid movement. Um, I, I don't know what I was doing. I thought I could take him on, but he was an experienced player. And, you know, it's all right. My life was really long and it was worth it. And this respawn weight is nothing compared to some of the enemies. And um, I was really, really surprised at our team because... You know, we did have a full Uber, and we did have a Medic, and we did have a Heavy, and for some reason it wasn't happening. I wasn't seeing any team support with me. I know I wasn't the most active spy, but um, my actions, I thought I did fine. Um, I didn't think that any other spies did better, so, you know, there's no complaining on my part. Part, sorry. Um, and if you're looking at the messages, that's um, Jester asking if he wanted to play, if I wanted to play some games with him. And I just said, yeah, you can join this one and try and help me win. But um, he didn't end up joining because he was um, in a trade server. And one of my subscribers um, did join the default Pineapple17. But he joined quite late and it was hard for him to get stuff done. Because I said, you should um, go engineer and get some teleporters up. Because that's what you really need on this side. Um, because the spawn walk is so long. And we end up getting pushed right back. And it was really unfortunate because I thought I did really well. And um, you kind of get that feeling where you're just working on your own. And, you know, it's, it's nice, but it's when you want to um, get some support and they're not there, it's not nice. So, yeah, we've just about hit um, around about 12 minutes in the gameplay. And this was probably one of our stronger pushes for Blue Team. We still haven't come into this bowl area, um, but I was very active here and I did well. Um, I was expecting some sort of push from the uh, team we have medics around soldiers around but still wasn't happening um, you won't see any blue players as far in as they are now I'm gonna say that now um, because the other team and I, f I believe they were a little bit stacked I mean they weren't that stacked but the next game you could tell that they were stacked because we just got rolled and that's why this isn't like a two-part video because they just push the payload right to the end of literally no stops, so a little bit stacked, but you know, um, stack gives you a challenge, and you don't always want an easy push. Um, you want a little bit of resistance, and it, sh it, it it brings a different kind of gameplay though as well. So um, yeah, it's always good to show variety in gameplays to get a full perspective of all the kind of things that will come up when you are a spy. And this set is, is really great to use. I've just come back to using it because um, I've been playing in a Highlander um, lobby and I was using the Spice Call with the Ambassador and it was really working for me. Um, yeah, because I'm trying to get better at Spy and by playing in the Highlander lobbies it gives you some experience. Because um, some of the players in here were very experienced. Um, we've got un unusual hats in here. I know it's not you can't really judge experience on unusual hats, but he was a good player. Um, with with an unusual hat. Um, so you know you don't always want to go in a Valve server and just pub stomp the enemy team because there's no point. It's it's not even a good gameplay when there's no resistance and you know it's good to practice there when you're starting off, but it's not a good place to stay because you just get too used to the newbie habits and as soon as you go into a different server, you just get owned because yeah it is you you struggle to find a good game in there and I don't play Valve servers. Um, yeah, I don't play Valve servers. Some people think I do because um, I made a Kunai highlights video for 2012 and I got some really nice chain stabs and um, people kept on having to go at me for pub stomping and I kept on trying to say that, you know, I wasn't actually pub stomping, I was just doing well. And, you know, doing well doesn't mean that you're pub stomping, just to make that clear. Um, you could class this game as doing well, but I am in no way pub stomping. I tried to get corner stab on this but obviously Spice Cult has its downsides. One of them is that pyros can destroy your knife and it can be very annoying having to wait for it. Um, but it, it's, it, um, I say the downsides are made up by the good sides because if you are a spy that struggles with pyros um, I wouldn't recommend the Spy School to start with because you'll get into bad habits of running into pyros and not caring. But um, if you are struggling in one particular game, 
you could use it because I know that the spy checks were a bit AWOL in this game and um, you know you can't always help that and a stock knife or whatever knife you know it might, you might need just that little bit of assistance to get behind the pyro spray and start working at them um, but yeah hit 15 minutes I'm still talking um, the gameplay is getting more and more uh, desperate but I'm still been alive for a long time um, you know what I mean by the survivalist spy set now I've not died for quite a bit of time um, but yeah the plays are getting more desperate and as you can see here um, that's what usually happens in payload and if you can keep your cool in a game it's really good because other players will lose their cool and panic and do stupid things um, and not think properly and if you can be the player that just takes it back, takes it slow, you will be the player that um, will end up winning. Um, but I, I can't help it. I just when you put so much into a game and you uh, you push the car and you really try your hardest, you can't. It's really hard to help it. Um, just being very desperate and it can sometimes pay off, but it's not a good tactic. Um, I've got into a bad habit now of face stabbing. It's really bad habit, and I should stop it, but. I've just got used to not switching to the pistol because the ambassador's body shots damage is very low. And as you can see here, how ridiculous is that? It's like a permanent pyro just sat there and he's just blocking the car. That's how hard um, it is for me to get at this car. I've got to, to get to the car, I've got to zap a sentry, kill an engineer and kill a pyro on the car um, and then push the car and that's if nobody sees me so... I, I've got a hard job at pushing the car myself and this is when I thought there was going to be teleporters up but I don't think we ended up getting time but that was um, default pineapple there playing as the engineer which he's one of my subscribers who likes to um, play in some of my games and I've said in previous videos if you want to play games with me you're always welcome I'll just tell you what map I'm on and you can join and sometimes I'll be recording sometimes I won't and sometimes I will be playing seriously and Sometimes I'll just be trading or whatever. I tend not to uh, trade that much. It's once every three weeks I'll go in a trade server for half a day and just get rid of some of my stuff and buy some new stuff. Then chuck it on Outpost and that'll do me for another three weeks. And you can make quite a healthy profit from just doing nothing on Outpost. Um, like I said, check the video out where um, I do an Outpost kind of like tutorial. It's really helpful. Um, and if you're into trading then you should watch it. But, uh, yeah, you're probably watching this gameplay because you're not interested in trading, so I am rambling on because the gameplay is nearly over and, like I said, the desperation comes out and, you know, I try my hardest, there's nothing I can do really and we got pinned right back. So I got bashed down by this soldier and the game ended. But thank you anyway for watching, I hope you have a nice day, see you later guys. So your peoples can stare at them rhymes Real rhymes, not your everyday hologram Even when ribs was touching, never swallowed the ham You'd rather eat a sand sandwich salad It might need salt like a man's bland ballad A lot of stuff happens that the news won't tell you Blues on L juice, snooze all hell loose Break it, take it like the good, the bad, the ugly Break it rolling through your hood and